American uniforms and American equipment are in full control of Kabul airport today. The men inside them, however, are not US citizens, but Taliban fighters celebrating victory over the force that swept them from power 20 years ago. Carrying US rifles and driving Humvees, just some of the billions of dollars worth of equipment left behind when the Taliban claimed victory and declared Afghanistan a free and sovereign nation. The group spokesman, Zabihullah Mujahid, uh, spoke to reporters from the runway of Kabul airport just a few hours ago. We have a message to any possible invader that anyone who looks to Afghanistan with bad intentions they will face what the United States has faced today. The Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan wants good relations with the Americans through diplomacy. However, the Americans failed here. They failed. From the military perspective, they failed to achieve their goals, but the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan wants to have good relations with the whole world on behalf of the nation. We want to have strong diplomatic relations with all including the United States. And Taliban celebrations marking the US's withdrawal have also been taking place in other parts of the country. Uh, to show you some pictures here, this is from the southern city of Kandahar that was once home to one of the largest NATO and coalition bases in the country. It's also the group's spiritual birthplace. In a sign of the significance of the moment of leaving the country, the U.S. says it has now also suspended its embassy operations in Kabul. Plans to continue to assist, though, with U.S. citizens and their families from Qatar. Instead, our North America correspondent Peter Bowes sent this report. The last American soldier to leave Afghanistan. Major General Chris Donahue boarding a cargo plane. The final flight out of Kabul. A hugely symbolic moment, bringing to an end the U.S. mission that started shortly after the September the 11th attacks in 2001. As the C-17 disappeared into the night sky, on the ground the Taliban celebrated with gunfire and fireworks. A victory for them, following two decades of international engagement in the country and recent weeks marked by violence, bloodshed and chaotic scenes in Kabul. The U.S. withdrawal follows frantic efforts over the past 18 days to fly 123,000 people out of Afghanistan, including 6,000 U.S. citizens. This has been a massive military, diplomatic and humanitarian undertaking, one of the most difficult in our nation's history, and an extraordinary feat of logistics and coordination under some of the most challenging circumstances imaginable. During the evacuations, 13 U.S. service members were killed in an attack on Kabul airport by ISK, a local branch of Islamic State. And the U.S. now faces questions over a drone attack on suspected militants, which also claimed the lives of 10 Afghan civilians, including children. Up to 200 Americans are believed still to be in the country. Look, there's a lot of heartbreak associated with this departure. We did not get everybody out that we wanted to get out. But I think if we'd stayed another 10 days, Louis, we wouldn't have gotten everybody out that we wanted to get out. And there still would have been people who would have been disappointed with that. It's a, it's, it's a tough situation. The US and its allies are now facing up to the Taliban being in charge in Afghanistan and the prospect of building a difficult diplomatic relationship, one that the Americans say will not be based on trust. Within minutes of that final US flight out of Kabul, the Taliban were in control of the airport, apparently in a reassuring mood. My message to the public and to the Mujahideen is that they must not go for gunfire. They must celebrate this happiness by worshipping the God. In the meantime, the Taliban's also taken control of abandoned US military hardware, including armoured vehicles and aircraft left behind during the withdrawal. The Americans say the equipment's been decommissioned or rendered useless, but for the Taliban, this is another right. strong symbol of their newfound power. Peter Bowes, BBC News, Los Angeles. Well, as the final US flight departed overnight, Taliban supporters took to the streets to celebrate. Our chief international correspondent, Lisa Doucette, is in Kabul. Well, listen, I mean, let's, listen. 
Listen, look at the tracer fire in the air. The guns are going off. You can see the, the streams of red lights. You can see behind me the tracer fire going up in the night sky. All day we had heard the American warplanes circling above the city, flying low as we thought the last American flights were taking off, providing extra cover in these last decisive hours. But it's now the 31st of August in Afghanistan, the day that President Joe Biden said the American military mission, the 20-year engagement by U.S.-led NATO forces would formally end. And this is what you are, are hearing now, the eruption of celebrity gunfire by Taliban supporters in the city of Kabul. Well, let's go alive now to our Afghanistan correspondent, Sekunda Kamani. Uh, when we saw Lisa, that was at, during the night time when all the celebratory gunfire, you've had a few hours now, of course, of uh, daylight. How has it been? Well, that celebratory gunfire really went on until the early hours of the morning. Uh, today, we saw the Taliban taking over the airport, uh, speaking to the media really from the tarmac where planes just a short while ago had been taking off and evacuating U.S. soldiers. The Taliban, of course, see this as a great victory, but not everyone in Afghanistan necessarily agrees with that. I'm joined now, actually, by the former governor of Nangarhar province, uh, Ziel Haq Amarkil. Thank you for spending time with us today. Thank you very much. Uh, as someone who was previously associated with the, with the previous government, what are your emotions today? Uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, no. Since two weeks, weeks, the Taliban is taking the country and everyone is waiting for them to establish a government, to form officially government. And today is a day that the U.S. forces withdrawal is completed. And now everyone is looking forward for Taliban. If the sooner they make the government, inform the government, it's better for everyone. And we are waiting for that. The second, the Taliban leadership has promised the Afghans they are going to uh, respect the fund fundamental rights of Afghans. And we see that if they really respect, if they uh, meet the commitment and as well as the promises they have done it with Afghan people, absolutely there will be a positive changes. If they do not f meet the commitment and as well as the promises they made it with Afghan people, there is a no doubt people is going to be disappointed. And, and a lot of the young generation, especially the well-educated, they will leave the country, and, and, and the businessmen will leave the country, and that will be a big crisis in, in the future of Afghanistan. But we are really hoping, the recently I had a few meetings with the leadership of Taliban, they have promised us, I did pass the message of people, especially the young generation, the well-educated people message to the Taliban leadership, and they have promised me that they are going to assume they have the government, they will respect the women, and they will allow the women to get their education as well as they will work too. But we will see that. We are waiting to form the Taliban, their government, and we will see how much they are going to respect and meet their commitments. And Mr. Amaka, I want to talk to you more about what the future government may or may not look like. First, I also want to look back a little bit. Your province, Nangarhar, is where the city of Jalalabad was. It was, one of the, it was the last city to fall before Kabul, and it fell peacefully without a shot being fired. Just talk me through how, how that went. What conversations did you have as governor of Nangarhar with the Taliban that allowed them to take over peacefully? Honestly, Ningrahar was one of the provinces they did fought very seriously against Taliban as well as in ISIS-K. We had a 20, 22 districts and none of the districts, it was fall to the Taliban. But we were the 33rd province that before Kabul, there was no other way except to have a dialogue and discussion with the Taliban. And we, thanks God, we had a peacefully transition in Ningrahar. It means there was a no fight, nothing happened, no looting. It was a peaceful transition from the Afghan government to the Taliban. And I was part of it, and that happened, and then I came to Kabul. I'm staying in Kabul right now. And now tell me, when it comes to the future government, some of my sources within the Taliban are saying that there's a distinct possibility they will re-establish the Islamic Emirate that they had in the 1990s. That might not necessarily mean they have all the same rules that they had in the 1990s, but the name will be there. Do you think that's a mistake? 
honestly, every single Afghan is waiting to form the government for Taliban. We will see that what kind of government they will have it. They are going, or they are going to include the politicians, or they are going to give, I mean, like chance to the Afghan women, or they are going to have only religious scholars. Would you, would you be happy to serve under a new government? Honestly, I'm, 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 I'm not going to discuss. I mean, myself. I mean, like it's not very important that I need to be the government or not in the government. But the main thing is that Taliban need to respect the Afghans. Taliban need to have an inclusive government, and Taliban need to give the right to every single Afghan, to men and women. I mean, like and the right in the past, in the past, Mr. Mugat, you've been a staunch critic of the Taliban. And I ask you frankly, do you feel safe here? Uh, I had a few meetings with the Taliban leadership, and uh, they have uh, promised me that uh, there is a new issue for you. And uh, still, I'm in a Kabul. I'm still meeting the young people, and I'm still meeting people. I'm still meeting the tribal leaders, the religious scholars, and convincing them not to leave the country, stay in Afghanistan, and we will see what is going to happen next. But one thing is very important, I have to be very frank, that the Taliban leadership is really trying. The Taliban leadership, whenever they have a message, the messages are wonderful, the good message is going to the people, but we are still not sure. Are they are going to meet the commitment? Are they are going to respect, I mean, like the promises they, they had it with Afghan people? Everyone is waiting for Taliban to form the government and to establish the government. As soon they establish, we will see that. And we will see that and the Afghan people will judge it. Thank you very much, Mr. Amakil. Well, that's the predominant sentiment I get from speaking to so many people here, one of uh, anxiety and uncertainty about the future. Many people say that the Taliban so far have been uh, unexpectedly conciliatory, in public at least, in their tone and attitude, but no one's quite sure how long that will last. A lot of attention is going to be focused now on what form of government emerges from all of this. Secunda, uh, thank you. Secunda Kamani there, live in Kabul. Uh,